Hello and good day, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 15th. My name is Megan McDowell, and I'm happy to welcome you all to another episode of Lap Talk. We have a special treat for you today as Tanvir Javed is joining us live from the Immersive Lab to give us an overview and a live demo of how to install your own remote monitoring system. Tanvir Javed is a product manager for Connected Solutions here at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And we want to welcome him to Lab Talk and thank him for sharing his knowledge with us today. As always, please feel free to use the Q&A function if you have any questions for Tanvir. Thank you, Megan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity today to talk about Device Link Connect. Uh, so you're probably wondering, uh, what is Device Link Connect? Uh, Device Link Connect is a state-of-the-art remote monitoring system that uses direct serial uh, USB-based instrument connections and or independent sensors to gather useful information um, about the operation of the equipment. Uh, data from the instrument is collected and is securely stored in the Thermo Fisher Connect cloud platform, uh, which enables you to view the condition of your lab equipment anytime, anywhere, uh, using Instrument Connect uh, web application, as well as uh, mobile interfaces for both Google, Android, as well as um, Apple devices. So what are the key benefits of Device Link Connect? So the biggest key takeaway from today's talk should be that it is customer installable. It's also Wi-Fi or Ethernet compatible. Uh, it's, uh, we offer independent sensor compatibility. It's also cloud-based monitoring, uh, which means that you get to uh, access 24-7. Your data, you can access it 24-7 for complete peace of mind. Uh, it is also um, Amazon Web Service infrastructure uh, with data encryption. Uh, network, firewalls, data backup, and uh, disaster recovery. Um, as I mentioned, it's also web application and mobile interfaces for both Google, Android, and Apple devices. Um, alerts and alarms are received via email, as well as in-application and push notifications. Uh, during a network outage, you do have up to seven days of internal data storage. Uh, during a power outage, the backup uh, battery for Device Link Connect is up to three hours. Uh, in addition to that, it is also US and Canada certified. And we also offer, it also offers over the air connectivity uh, module updates. So there's no need to update uh, the instrument firmware, uh, something that was uh, in the embedded uh, technology. Now I will move over to give a live demo of uh, Device Link Connect. So inside the box, you will find the Device Link Connect mode, a PoE adapter and cable, serial USB cable, mounting hardware, and a USB commissioner dongle. In addition to that, we also have independent sensors. The one on display here is a PT100 temperature sensor. So the first step is providing power to the mode. For this, you'll need to connect the Ethernet cable to the out port on the wall adapter. The other end of the cable will go into the PoE LAN, which is located behind the Device Link Connect box. Plug the adapter into the AC socket. Once you have plugged everything in, switch it to the on position, and the blinking LEDs will indicate the mode is getting power. We can now connect the Device Link Connect box directly to the equipment using the serial or USB cable that's provided. Start by connecting the USB end of the provided cable into any one of the four USB ports. For this, I'm going to select USB 1. The other end of the cable will go into the serial port behind the ULT freezer. During this process, please note, you need to record which USB port you have chosen as this information will be needed during the commissioning process of your system. We can now connect independent sensors. Independent sensors can be used either in conjunction with a system connected via a serial port or as a standalone independent monitoring system. For this demo, I will go over the process for connecting a temperature sensor into a ULT freezer. 
Locate the sensor housing, which is typically located near the bottom of the freezer. In the interest of time, I've actually already gone ahead and removed the housing from this ULT freezer. So what you need to do is insert the probe. Once you have inserted the probe, you will go ahead and put this back into the, uh, into the freezer and route the wire through the access port, which is located on the rear of the freezer. It is recommended to cover the access port using a flexible sealing agent to minimize heat loss through the port itself. Plug the USB end of the independent sensor cable into one of the USB ports on the back of the device link connect. Again, you need to record the USB port you have chosen as this information will be needed during the commissioning process. I am going with USB number two for this. Mount the device link connect box to the top of your device or in a position it will not be disturbed during normal operation. You can also use the mounting hardware to secure the access wires so they stay in place. Once you have connected all of your sensors and cables into the device link connect box and supplied power to the box, you are now ready to commission or set up the system with its network connection. Before moving to your computer, you need to make sure you have inserted the USB commissioner dongle into one of the USB ports on the back of the device link connect box. Angela will now play a video which outlines the commissioning process. From your computer or internet enabled mobile device, select the wireless network with an SSID or network name in the form of moat numbers. If you are working with multiple device link connect boxes, the numbers are actually part of the individual MAC addresses which are labeled on the device link connect boxes. When you select the moat network, you will be prompted to enter a password. The password is identical to the name of the network. In this case, moat dash numbers dash numbers. Once the connection is established, navigate to your web browser and go to dlc.local colon 9292. You will be prompted to enter a username and password to obtain access. The username is admin and the password is change this password. As this is the first login, you will be asked to change the password and re-login. Once complete, you will be directed to the Device Link Connect homepage. There are three tabs of importance in the commissioner when you are doing basic network setup. Those tabs are Wi-Fi, sensors, and Device Link. There is a top progress indicator at the top of the screen which will indicate which steps are left to be completed during your commissioning process. Start by navigating to the Wi-Fi page. Here you will need to scan the available networks by pressing the scan button. Indicate what type of network authentication or security your, your Wi-Fi network has. Select the network from the list and enter your network credentials. When ready, hit the submit button. This will establish the Wi-Fi connection to your device link connect. You will see the Wi-Fi go green indicating it was successful. For advanced network setup, please refer to the Device Link Connect user manual. Next, we move to the sensors page. This is where you indicate what type of sensors and or equipment you have connected to your Device Link Connect box. Click the Add Sensor button. Indicate what type of sensor or equipment type you wish to add and which USB port that given sensor or cable is plugged into on the back of the Device Link Connect box. You will be asked to enter the rate of sampling for your sensors. Once ready, press the Submit button. Like the Wi-Fi section, the sensors indicator at the top of the screen will go green once the sensors have been established. You can repeat this process for each additional sensor you wish to connect. Note, you cannot connect more than one piece of equipment via a serial port connection to a single device link connect box. The last page to complete is the device link page. Here you'll be asked to enter the email address associated with your ThermoConnect account. If you have not already established a ThermoConnect account, go to apps.thermofisher.com and create your free account. You'll be asked to enter the serial number as well of the asset you are monitoring. This is the serial number on the equipment, like your freezer or incubator. This serial number is used in associating the data from the device in your ThermoConnect account. Once ready, hit the deploy button. 
You will see a full green progress bar at the top of your screen once the setup is successful. You have now completed the commissioning process. Remove the USB dongle from the Device Link Connect box and reinsert any sensor you may have disconnected during this process. The only thing left to do now is accept your new instrument in your ThermoConnect account. Start by re-establishing your normal Wi-Fi network on your computer or mobile device. Disconnect from the Moat network. Navigate to apps.thermofisher.com and sign in. Once logged in, navigate to the Instrument Connect app via the left navigation menu. You should now see a message at the top of your screen indicating one approval request pending. If you don't, give it a few seconds and refresh the page. Once the request appears, click the request and accept your equipment. Now you can monitor your device anytime, anywhere using the Instrument Connect web platform or the mobile application which is available for download on both Android and iOS devices. Thank you for that. So now, uh, just to summarize everything. So uh, as I mentioned, Device Link Connect is a remote monitoring and asset management solution uh, targeting life science uh, manufacturing companies as well as uh, research institutions. Uh, Device Link Connect system sends information to the Thermo Fisher Connect Cloud platform, which is supported by Amazon Web Services. And the users are able to access the device information uh, via Instrument Connect application on the Connect platform. Uh, we have some resourceful links here. The first one is a main device link connect page. Over here, you can find uh, installation videos along with other customer facing materials from brochures to technical data sheets. Um, also have a QR code if you want to take a picture of that. Uh, this QR code will take you directly to the installation video. Thank you. Um, any questions? Thank you, Tanvir. Uh, we did have a couple questions come in. Um, first, I can actually answer the first one. Someone had a question about the model freezer that um, you were demoing with. Um, that is our Thermo Scientific TSX 700 box unit. It has the light bar feature at the bottom. Um, or, I'm sorry, we actually, that was our TDE. We have our TSX um, in the immersive lab as well. So it's our TDE 600 box unit that you were demoing with. Um, uh, we had another question about the type of data security in place um, for Device Link Connect. Could you talk a little bit about that, Tanvir? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, all of the data that is uh, stored is highly secure. Uh, Amazon Web Service data centers are managed by compliance programs uh, with audit safeguards. Uh, security features include uh, data encryption, uh, network firewalls, uh, scheduled audits, um, and then data backup and recovery as well. Great, thank you. Uh, we had another question. Can you connect Vice Link to CO2 incubators? And if so, what parameters can you measure? This was actually a question too that was popped up last week. So um, happy to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great question. So yeah, so for CO2 incubators, uh, the, the Device Link Connect system reports uh, chamber temperatures, uh, gas levels, uh, alarms and alerts received uh, via the incubator data output uh, connection. Great, thank you. And then one last question um, for someone doing this on their own, what installation material is available to them? That's another great question. Yes, yeah, so we actually do have a lot of material available. Uh, there's a ton of uh, quick start guys that we've developed uh, videos as well. Those are like a one to two minute long videos uh, that break down the steps, uh, easy steps to follow. And then we also have that QR code uh, that I presented. If you take, you know, if you take a picture of that, the QR code will take you to the installation video. It's about an eight minute long video. It starts from right at the beginning to all the way to the commissioning process. Just a great, uh, great tool to have. Awesome. Thank you so much. A lot of great resources out there for people to, to do this on their own. So um, that was the, the end of our questions. Um, wanted to thank you again, Tanvir, for sharing that super helpful demo with everyone. Um, we hope you can take these best practices back to your lab um, to be more connected with your science. So, and, you know, as we mentioned here, there's a lot of great resources on our website to help you with that. Um, so you can take advantage of those, scan the QR code um, and, and watch that great video. So be sure to join us next Thursday, June 22nd, um, where we will be sharing important things to consider when choosing the right cold storage for your lab. And our late summer and fall schedule will be out soon. 
Um, so we're really excited about showing those topics that we have planned for you for the second half of the year. So stay tuned for those. Um, and if you miss any of the previous episodes, you can view them on demand here in the Learn Event Hub um, or also out on our Thermo Fisher Scientific YouTube channel. You'll join us next week and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great day, everyone.